Hello and welcome to NewsClicks International Roundup. Today, we look at a situation in Syria where there have been reports of Russia launching air raids on extremist positions in Idlib. And this is happening even as the Syrian army has been preparing for a major offensive in this region. To talk more about this, we have with us Prabir Purkaisa, Editor-in-Chief, NewsClick. Hello, Prabir. Prabir, how do you see the consequences and the developments around the possibility of a, uh, the latest, uh, what do you call, offensive taking place in Idlib? As you can see, Idlib is in the upper corner of Syria and strategically it's a very important area partly because it's between Turkey and Syria at the moment. It has the largest concentration of what would be called ISIS or Al-Qaeda forces in the region particularly Al-Qaeda who have been evacuated from different parts of Syria as a part of the deal to for the extremists to leave their areas and go somewhere so that the battle over these areas don't take place continuously with loss of civilian lives and so on. And also the separation therefore of those who are not so close to Al-Qaeda and other forces. As a consequence, the Al-Qaeda forces, all Ahrar al-Sham, which are what is called Al-Qaeda light, have all gathered in Idlib. Though they have been having internecine battles among themselves, a number of them have got killed, they have killed each other. But nevertheless, it is the largest concentration of forces which are inimical to the Assad government. And they also have a lot of foreign uh, fighters over there. The numbers vary depending on who's giving you the figures. But there could be as many as 10 to 20,000 external fighters who, if they leave this region, they will probably go back to, say, France or go back to Europe, go back to Caucasus, uh, probably to Russia, parts of Russia, which is still, uh, there is Chechen and other kinds of disturbances still in those regions. And possibly some would even go to the uh, uh, Xinjiang province, where also there is an uh, Islamist kind of militancy which is there. Now, given that Idlib is important, and it is the large, largest concentration of forces who are against the Assad government. So Syria has been preparing for some time to take back Idlib. And with the Russian bombings which have started today, it does appear that the next battle is going to be battle over Idlib. It's not over the other side of it. You can see from the other side of Euphrates, east of Euphrates, that area is controlled really by uh, Kurdish forces, United States Army has also put in some of its soldiers over there. There are bases over there and they are supporting the Kurds. It's also true that the Kurds have also been talking to the Assad government for some kind of understanding. We are not clear how this is going to develop given the fact that they also get the support of the United States. And will the United States sacrifice the Kurds? for say reapproachment with Turkey, will the Kurds decide that they have a better bet going with Assad which is clearly who is now the victim of the, of the Syrian uh, proxy war if not uh, civil war. Some people who call it civil war I would say it has been more of a proxy war. So given that I think this is, uh, it is true that east of Euphrates, Euphrates is not the immediate target for the government but this is. The other area and you can see it down in the map is the Altanaf area where there are ISIS concentrations nearby that region. There are also anti-Assad forces there but they are under the protection of the American armed forces. Why Altanaf is an American enclave? in or a NATO enclave in southern uh, Syria is an open question but it is more to really block the Damascus uh, Baghdad highway that it seems that uh, Americans have posted themselves there. So this is a question mark that there doesn't seem to have any strategic value uh, of uh, in terms of Syria but why they should be there is more in terms of not letting the Iraqis and the Syrians have a you know a direct flow. This is the really the Damascus Baghdad highway which connects the two and sort of severing that seems to be the only strategic importance it can be. Idlib is a very serious issue. It is going to see a bitter fight. There is anything between 30,000, 20 to 30,000 forces over there. There is Al-Qaeda over there. There are other forces over there and they are not going to give up this last sanctuary very easily. It really depends what Turkey is going to do. 
Will Turkey give them any support or not give them any support? And what does the United States, France and England, who've been also doing some saber rattling right. on this, what they do? Yes, yeah, so since you mentioned these three countries, I think in, on the 23rd of August, if I'm not mistaken, there was a joint statement in which they said that if there was even the slightest evidence of chemical, uh, uh, chemical attacks by the state, they would immediately not hesitate to intervene. So do you see the possibility of for any false flag attacks or what is the relevance of a statement at this point of well, time? Well, that's a very interesting issue because it's, it is now openly admitted by all parties, including the CIA and the United Nations, that both Al-Qaeda and the Syrian government have the ability to do what is called weaponized chlorine attacks. Now, no modern state has ever used chlorine in a chemical attack for the simple reason chlorine is not a very effective chemical weapon. And when you have so many other newer versions of chemical weapons, including the Novichok, which got famous because of the, of the UK exact case, uh, why would anybody, any state, use chlorine, weaponized chlorine? It is also true that there is enough evidence to show that Al-Qaeda has the ability to use chlorine and has done so on a number of occasions. The latest statement by the United Nations uh, the representative who is leading the peace talks, Mistura, he has himself said that both United, the, the Syrian government and Al-Qaeda has the ability to use chlorine right. attacks. And it's also true that number of examples have been shown that when the chemical attacks have been by the forces opposed to Assad, and though the United Nations uh, or the what is the uh, OPCW, which is supposed to look at the chemical weapons uh, issues, they have been sort of saying half and half, we don't know kind of thing. But it is nevertheless clear that with the preponderance of military power with the Syrian government, Syrian government would be very foolish to use a chlorine attack, right. which is what they claim they have done at any time that the, the uh, opposition forces or the rebel forces have been surrounded. And then they have always claimed the Syrian government does a chlorine attack. Now, this statement, and don't forget this comes in, uh, in, in the aftermath of already two, saw two attacks being launched on Syria on the basis of uh, chemical weapons being used by the Syrian government forces without any proof. Now, given that this kind of statement that they will launch attacks on Syrian government if the Syrian government uses chemical weapons in Idlib is almost a green signal for the anti-Assad forces or Al-Qaeda forces to use chemical weapons and then claim that it has been done by the Syrian government. So it seems to be a, a shall we say, incentive for a false flag attack. So this statement seems to be extremely mischievous and it seems to be an, a, a, that this is the trigger. Okay, you guys do something so we can attack the Syrian government. So I, I do see that this is an extremely dangerous provocation, particularly in the way now the campaign is being launched by Western media. We saw that in Aleppo. We saw that also in the southern, uh, in Dara, for instance, or in al Sweda, wherever uh, the forces have moved into captured territory from the rebel forces. The Western media has talked about the great humanitarian danger that the civilian population faces, though such shall we say, sympathy does not seem to extend to Yemen, where we already have one million under cholera. We have seen the food uh, supplies being completely stopped. We have seen large-scale uh, hunger, deprivation, children being under malnourished. All the, all the worst things you can see today in a war is what you see in Yemen. And there, of course, the, Syria, the, uh, the Syrian example doesn't play uh, at all. What you have instead is really more arms being given, more, shall we say, sympathy being extended to Saudi Arabian forces, and even military support in terms of how the airstrike should take place in Yemen, which are really being essentially uh, coordinated by American forces and by British forces. They are the ones who are really doing all the back end, shall we say, for the actual strikes to take place, including refueling Saudi Arabian planes in the air. So given all of that, this seems to be an extremely mischievous, uh, shall we say, attempt to create the grounds for a military intervention against the Syrian government. 
and also the way the entire Western media operates like a chorus right. in favor of what the U.S. government and its NATO allies, uh, shall we say, game plan is, is also extremely disturbing because this does have the portent to have a major confrontation between Russia and the Syrian forces and the NATO forces in the region. And even as the U.S. is doing all this saber rattling, it seems completely cut off from the peace process. For instance, the Astana talks are being done almost entirely without it. And even this Friday, the meeting between the leaders of Iran, Russia and Turkey to discuss the situation in Idlib is completely excluding the United States. So it's basically almost entirely out of the peace process in Syria. Well, it may be out of the peace process in Syria, but it has also insisted recently that they do not recognize the Astana process at all and everybody should come back to the United Nations process where they have a veto. So they are basically saying, we will play the spoiler. If Turkey, uh, Russia, Syria, Iran come to any agreement, and this is really important for Idlib, then we will not accept that and therefore we have the right because we have forces in the region. We already have uh, different forces both east of Euphrates as well as Daltanaf that we have the right to play spoiler and we will not let this happen. More than that, if we look at the Mediterranean Sea, uh, that's where also a major consolidation of naval forces are taking place. We have the Russian forces who are in this part of the Mediterranean near the Syrian uh, coastline. Latakia, Taurus are the places where they are also have bases. And you have on the western Mediterranean, you have the uh, NATO forces. And the United States has marshaled a fair amount of naval power over there. And most of the air strikes on Syria have taken place from the Mediterranean, their naval ships. So given that, I think the other major fla flashpoint could be that if they don't want the Astana peace process, which could be an end game for Idlib, could lead to the Kurds coming back to the table, negotiating some kind of autonomy with the Assad government. It could be, if that is to be stopped, it could be that the NATO forces would intervene. And there is this Mediterranean naval ships, the naval flotilla that it has, and it has the air bases, it has also in Qatar, it has in uh, Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, even in Jordan, the US and NATO has bases. So all of this could be involved, including some ground forces that the US has in Syria today. So all of this is a flashpoint. Let's recognize that these are, there are two ways you can really have an extremely dangerous situation for two nuclear powers to come lock its horns. So one is, if they do a bombing based on a chemical weapons attack, as we're saying, and if that happens, then the bomb, either uh, Syrian government uh, offices, presidential palace, bases, this would also could also be the attack also some say, the Russian forces because Russian facilities or forces are there in Syria and different places. So that is uh, one possibility. Russians have also said if that takes place, they are going to take out whatever, wherever the weapons have been fired from, they have the right to take it out, which means actually the naval uh, arms which are used, naval missiles which are used, then they can even attack the naval platform from which it has been launched. So I think given this, that you have this, shall we say, the Mediterranean Sea conf confrontation and the other part that we talked about earlier, I think we are developing into a very dangerous, possibly a dangerous situation. And the Astana priest process, if it is attempted to be stopped, the United States has a military option to stop it not through any diplomatic means because its diplomatic initiatives are not really working. Uh, it, Turkey is not coming close to Americans or to NATO. It seems to be going further away. Turkey, Russia, Syria, Iran, today can determine what's going to happen in Idlib. So if that happens and there is some arrangement done with the Kurds, Americans are virtually out of Syria completely and al Taraf cannot be sustained for very long. So given that, that their best bet could be, could be to try and stop it militarily using chemical weapons excuse as an 
uh, as, uh, as something to launch airstrikes on the Syrian government. And if they do that, it's escalation to also involve Russia is there. And I think that's a very dangerous moment for all of us. It does seem that Trump, who we thought might be withdrawing from Syria, seems at last to have dug his heels in, is supporting all of this and also has now tweeted about the grave danger to Idlib, the great humanitarian crisis of Idlib, which apparently is not there if they're under Al-Qaeda control, supposedly against whom they have launched their global war on terror. Thank you, Prabir. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching NewsClick.